from the Certificate Authority, Let's Encrypt. Now, the uh, instructions here are also in one of our blog posts, and we'll be sure to include that in the description below. Now, before I do that step, it's really important that I did the previous step of running the SME config server and assigning the host names to my appliance. I'm going to use those host names to now go out and get a certificate, which means that the host names I use also have to be uh, publicly accessible on a DNS server, uh, the FQDNs. And then also, uh, this server is going to need to be able to be contacted by the authority, which means that we need to ensure that in your firewall you've got port 443 open. So I'm going to SSH into my system using the SME config user. And once I do, I'm going to use SU dash to become the root user. Now that I'm the root user, I need to install a package. So I'm going to do yum install python certbot apache and then minus y so it doesn't prompt me. This process will probably take a minute or two. Uh, first yum is going to update your repos and then it's going to pull in the packages that were requested. So I went ahead and sped that up. Now the next step is to have CertBot go out and request these certificates for your installation. For this, you're going to have to use the FQDN of your appliance that you registered in the previous step. If you want to use our S3 API or our Web Dev API, you'll need to request those in the same uh, command. Now if you don't have any intention of using S3 or Web Dev, you can just skip uh, requesting those. But for this example, I'm going to request all of my host names in my certificate. So I'm going to run certbot dash dash apache minus d. And then the FQDN of this system is learn.storagemadeeasy.com. And then I would like to run the S3 service. So I'm going to request that certificate as well, which is s3.learn.storagemadeeasy.com. And then lastly, I'm going to do dash D because I would also like the web dev certificate. And so I'm going to request webdev.learn.storagemadeeasy.com. Now before I run this command, it's important that I don't have any uh, misspellings. If I have any misspellings, then what you're going to see is that the certificate process will fail on that particular FQDN. The first thing it asks me for is my email address. And the reason it does this is so that it can email you if your certificate's about to expire and has not been renewed. Next, asks if I agree to the terms of service, which I do. And it asks if it would like to share my email with the Electronic Frontier Foundation. I don't want to for this video. So now the system is doing a challenge. And again, it's important that we have the firewall open for 443 so that uh, those DNS names, Learn, S3, and WebDev, could all be challenged. And as you can see, we've been successfully challenged and as such, I now have my certificates, and they're going to be in this directory. So why don't we just look in that directory very quickly. So when I look in that directory, I can see that I have four certificates, and they're pointing to my newest um, certificate, which is going to be cert, chain, full chain, and private key. We're going to use these in the next step. So the next step is going to be to alter my SSL uh, config file for Apache and to register these files. To do that, I'm going to do vi slash etc httpd config.d ssl.conf. Once I'm in the ssl.conf file, I can search for my cer current certificates by hitting slash and then type in CRT. So here's my first certificate. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this entry by pressing D and then the dollar sign. And again, you could use nano if you prefer. And I'm going to insert the path uh, to my certificate, which I cut and pasted from the previous screen. And I'm going to start off with cert.pem. Now for my private key, I'm going to do the same thing. Let's get back to the beginning. D dollar sign deletes everything. Press I to insert. I'm going to paste the path. And now I am going to do P-R-I-V-K-E-Y dot P-E-M. I'm going to come down to this line. Navigate to the beginning line. I'm going to press X to delete that uh, comment. And then again, I'm going to do my D dollar sign to delete that line. And I'm going to insert my path. And for the certificate chain, we are going to do chain.pem. Lastly, we have the bundle, which is the CA certificate file. So again, I'm going to go to the beginning, press X to delete that comment. D dollar sign deletes the um, remainder of the line. I to insert, paste my path, and now type in full chain dot PEM. So now I've updated my SSL file with the proper new certificates from Let's Encrypt. I'm going to hit colon WQ to save my file. And I'm going to restart HTTPD. So system CTL restart HTTPD. And this is really what's going to tell me if I have any issues because if I have a problem, the service will not restart properly. Now in my case, this appears to have restarted perfectly, but I can confirm that with system CTL status HTTPD. And we can see that my um, my service is active and running. So now at this point, I can navigate to my website and I should have my certificate. So navigating to learn.storagemadeeasy.com, I can now see that I have this green lock, which is my certificate. Um, it's secure. And if I look at it, I can see that it's been verified by Let's Encrypt. And if I really want to with Firefox, I can get more information and I can uh, view this certificate. Um, the important thing to note about this certificate, if I do view it, the important thing to note about this is that if I look under details, I can see that under certificate subject alternative names uh, that I have my S3 and my web dev uh, set up as well. So now the last step that I need to do with this is if we look back in general, my certificate's um, only valid for about three months, and they do this intentionally. Um, it's part of keeping the Internet secure and um, ensuring that people don't abuse certificates. And so well, the last thing we want to do is we want to cron our job so that uh, once a month or maybe once a week we go out and request a new certificate and we auto-renew the certificate so it never expires. So I'm going to go back to my terminal. And back in my terminal, I am going to run cron tab minus E, again, as the root user. And I'm going to schedule uh, this job to run by inserting the follow following line. And so what this line says is that at 2.30 in the morning on the first day of each week, uh, which is actually going to be Monday, to run the renewal script and to log what the renew script um, produces in var log let's encrypt le renew log. And so I'll be able to check this log from time to time and see um, the attempts or the renewal of my certificate. I'll of course be able to check this with my site as well. And so when I'm done with this, I can do WQ. And at this point, I am able to log out of the system as once a, a week, my system will try to renew its certificate, and that's going to keep me with a valid certificate for a long time. Thank you, and this concludes using Let's Encrypt to make certificates for your SME appliance.